Hello and welcome to a bonus episode of Living Life Differently. So we're Amy and Ali and we're the Mahojos and today we're going to tell you a little bit about us and our story. And we're doing it today because it's the 8th of March and it's International Women's Day 2021. So woohoo to all the women out there and all the people that support women out there. We're actually taking the opportunity while Ollie's asleep, we'll talk a little bit more about him later, just to try and get this done. So we thought we'd tell you guys a bit about us and why we set up the podcast and also a bit about where we are, um, yeah, geographically and where we are in life. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> so yeah, my name's Amy. Um, I'm an ODP, which uh, basically means um, I work in anaesthetics, helping doctors be absolutely awesome. Um, I'm on a year's maternity leave. Um, we've had a son, Ollie, who is six months old next week. So we're spending the year together trying to bring up the son in the best way we can. What does ODP stand for for people that don't know about hospitals and stuff? Awesome. Uh, <laughs> operating department practitioner. And what kind of stuff do you do normally when you're not on maternity leave? So, uh, yeah, we um, administer anaesthetics to people. So we try to put them to sleep and wake them up. We work a lot in recess, um, maternity, so you'll quite often see us around even though you won't know who we are. Ooh, Ooh. mysterious. So I'm Ali, I'm 46, rolling closer to 47. I, what do I do? Well, I'm actually on a year off with Amy at the moment. We'd planned this for a really long time before the pandemic came along and before Ollie, well, kind of because Ollie came along, we've decided to be on a year off together. But when I'm not on a year off, um, I work in the probation service, the National Probation Service. So I have a caseload of uh, people who've committed crimes or different crimes um, and work with those people to make sure that they don't do anything silly again. Um, and I also am a accredited sports psychologist, so I work with sports teams and individuals across South Wales, but I'm doing, doing quite a lot of work online at the moment as well. So what I like to say is I work with sporty people and naughty people. Boom, boom. I was waiting for that. (laughs) Do I use that too often? No, it's fine. (laughs) So yeah, the year off. Wow, that's been interesting. Um, I'd spoken to my employer quite a while ago about taking a year off and it was they'd agreed to it um, kind of when the pandemic had first eased off. So in our minds, I think we both thought that We'd have this fantastic year off together. Ollie would come along. We'd learn how to be parents and then we'd all sit off in our little camper van across Europe. But it hasn't really worked out that way, has it? Not at all. Um, So we had IVF to um, conceive Ollie, um, which was an amazing experience. Uh, During early, early pregnancy, our street flooded. Uh, So we were living in Pontypris and our street flooded. So we had to evacuate early hours in the morning which wasn't great Uh, and that was part of the catalyst of deciding that we couldn't continue to live where we were with the fear of flooding fear of what if it happened again obviously having ollie as well you know it kind of changes your perspective on what is important yeah i think that was quite a a shift for us i mean we were lucky weren't we because our house didn't flood but our our neighbours' houses were absolutely decimated and it was after a major storm, Storm Dennis, back in February. Um, was that last year? Wow, it feels like longer ago. It was 2020. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, my car got flooded up to its kind of, well, up to the front passenger, uh, uh, the driver's seat and passenger seat. Um, and it was one of the scariest nights of our lives, actually. Amy was obviously pregnant at the time and... Um, I don't know, I think something just changed in both of us, um, seeing the force of nature like that, um, and obviously already we'd put the wheels in motion for having one in a year off together, and then we just started to put things in motion really, and one of those things was getting out of the flat that we were renting at the time on that street that flooded, which was like, with a bit of a heavy heart, wasn't it, because we we got some good neighbours on the street and everything, um, but the flat wasn't ideal, it was dark. Cold, <laughs> yeah. so cold. Cold in the winter, real lack of out- outside space, but the location was fantastic. The location was amazing for both of us, sort of massively on the com- commuter run for me, 
and you could walk to work the park across the road for the dog so and the shopping center obviously there as well but life changes and our needs changed very rapidly yeah so tell everyone how we ended up in this static caravan that we're recording in right now amy <laughs> I had this brain like brainwave when when talking to my brother and my, my brother was like, why do you just buy a static? And Ali was completely against it. I think she had this vision of just this little clampets kind of caravan with yeah you know, one of those pot step things, an awful thing. And um, so I kept mentioning it, and it was like, no, dismissed, dismissed. And Ali's a little bit secretive at times. Um, she loves an Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, Ali's there having a little look on eBay at static caravans. So we start looking at sort of the really low, low budget ones, which are okay. Um, we went down to one that was on sale nearby and it was awesome. It was absolutely awesome. But then we realized that we'd have to change our plans because it was too wide. So we're living in a really, really, really rural place. And there's no chance of getting the 12 foot wide 35 foot long caravan through the lanes to actually get to the property there's no problem once it gets here but getting it here would have been an absolute nightmare mm. so rewinding a bit when amy threw into the mix why don't we go and live in a static caravan and the reason why that was mentioned was because we'd planned this year off together meaning that obviously i'd, I'd be on unpaid leave from my kind of full-time proper job if you like um and have a little a small amount of self-employed income on the side and then we'd have Amy's maternity leave money but that's it to live on so we knew we couldn't keep the flat on the flat was a what 550 a month mm -hmm. plus council tax plus bills blah 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 so you know close to a grand a month was going out just on on having a roof over our heads so we were like well what can we do so Amy's mum lives on a farm you know not far from where we were living and she'd offered for us to come back and live back at the farm which we'd done before and that was an option that was on the table and we did consider that and we we're thinking well how would that work with a newborn baby and being under your mum's feet and stuff and and then we were like well we can't move into our camper van straight away either because that's tiny and it, it well it isn't tiny it's a mercedes sprint and long wheelbase but in in the big scheme of things we couldn't have gone in there straight away with um ollie being born so that's where you've got the idea for the static and when you first said it, the thing that sprung to my mind was many, many years ago, going on a football tour to Clacton-on-Sea um, and being absolutely freezing my bits off in this crappy box, damp, oh, horrible, dingy place. I, I just got, you know, images of Butlins, Pontins in the olden days. <laughs> Not that that's what it's like now. And I, I think I was, like, pleasantly surprised when I did eventually think, oh, maybe I'll look into it. Um, I mean, some of these static caravans are, like, amazing, aren't but they? Some of them are absolutely incredible. You know, they are proper home away from home. Everything that you need, you know, well, it's our home anyway, so. Yeah. So when we, we had our hearts set on this, this one, didn't we, the one we went to see, yeah. and we were all excited, and, and I was like, oh, actually, this is quite decent. I could picture us living in that. And then, you know we realised we couldn't get it up the lanes. I think our our dreams were a bit crushed, weren't they? We'd gone from being on cloud nine thinking we'd be mortgage free, rent free, living our best lives. We'd always have kind of a base, um, somewhere to leave everything without having to clutter my mum's house or feeling that we're kind of leaving our stuff around in somebody else's house. So... Yeah, we got to the stage where we were like, right, we're having it, we're going to go home, we're going to pay for it. And then obviously speaking to our stepbrother, he um, informed us that it's not going to happen. But we kept looking, didn't we? So we were like, okay, if a 12 foot one isn't going to fit, then maybe a 10 foot one will. So we looked at a couple more and then we found this one down in Swansea uh, or near Swansea. And we went to look at it. And it was above what we wanted to spend. In fact, double what, what we were looking at spending originally. But as soon as we stepped in it, we were like, wow, this is amazing. And there's a video 
on our YouTube channel where we do a little bit of a guided tour around it when we just had it plonked here. Um, and it is really modern, you know, it's not like the old Clacton on Sea <laughs> shed that I went on football touring and, and everyone that's come to visit, like before we were locked down for months and months and months, you know, pe people have been really surprised because I think when you say we live in a static, people just automatically think that poor child. <laughs> Yeah. What about this? <laughs> we don't count anymore. It's the dog <laughs> and the child. Yeah, I think people do kind of raise an eyebrow when we tell them that we live in a static. But then they come along and realise it's actually better than most of the houses that I've lived in in the last 10 years. Yeah, it is surprising. And in terms of getting permission to have it um, here, in, in the well, we're actually in the perimeter of the garden of... The farm of Amy's mum's farm, and obviously she gave us permission to be here. We just you dropped it in. <laughs> Surprise! We just rock up, and this low loader comes along, and it's like, Jan, guess what? We're moving in to your garden. Um, but yeah, obviously we talked about it a lot before. Um, before we kind of paid for the one we've got now. And for anyone who wants to know the details, it was six and a half thousand pounds, wasn't it? Delivered on the back of a lorry. Ah. Uh, but it was quite difficult to, um, even though we'd worked out that we could get it here, we realised half the trees in the neighbourhood would have to be cut. <laughs> well, yeah, so our our friend, you know, stepbrother friend, um, arranged with a, another farmer down the road to trim some of his trees that were overhanging the, the lane that the um, caravan needed to come down. So that, that was brilliant, you know, it was really supportive of them. And also the the people that were selling the van they came out and did a recce they didn't charge us for that did they it was just really good of them so they were like yeah yeah don't worry we'll get it in and, and it all worked out fine the drivers though like i've got class one license the driver of that truck could have got it through a five pence piece he was absolutely sensational yeah and there is another video showing how we did get oh it in here <laughs> it was quite an effort and again we we owe a lot to late in our stepbrother friend who who did so much of the hard work in terms of getting it finally into its resting place god what a palaver um so yeah we're living in the boundary of the farm garden um currently looking out to to my right like blue skies trees some of the old farm outbuildings and behind us more blue sky and a bit of an orchard with a, a little stream running through it can hear birds in the background and it's all right isn't it I love it. It's nice to be back home. Um, peace and quiet. It's a great place, I think, for Ollie to be brought up when we're not away. It's a safe environment. Um, I grew up here and I think you have a lot more freedom. And I think you can learn and become a really awesome person. Oh, Unlike nice. me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be daft. So... Did you ever imagine, like, thinking about, obviously, the topic of living life differently, and, and we're certainly doing that right now, if you think back to your younger self, did you ever imagine that your younger self at your age now would be living in a caravan in a garden? Absolutely not. Um, I never wanted to conform, so I never wanted the university degree the career and all that which I eventually ended up doing anyway <laughs> but you know as a younger person I just wanted to be free and travel and and get away so that part of living life differently is still the same you know it's just that need to escape and and try new things but I don't know it's kind of I kind of feel like we are but then we're not secretly kind of part of me wants to conform and do that career bit and then the rest of me just wants to go no run yeah. escape yeah it's funny because i mean i never imagined that i'd end up living in a caravan but being here now it feels like almost why didn't we consider doing it sooner but i guess you you go through lots of different phases in your life and certainly for my kind of thinking about career you know you mentioned career and stuff you know i've done different things um and i, I remember getting to a point in life and i think i blame this on when i went traveling um, back in 2005, 2006, I was working at the time. I had a career. I had a house with a mortgage um, and ended up deciding with my partner at the time 
to pack it all in, sell the house, because we'd got a valuation and it, it had gone through the roof. So we were like, well, why don't we sell the house and travel the world? And that was in my 30s. So it's a bit late for like a, a young person gap year kind of thing. But I think I always had something in the back of my mind that wanted to just go off and explore. Um, so that decision led to me packing in my job at a university um, and travelling the world for, I think it was six, seven months with a backpack. Before the, the days of like smartphones, you know, I had a little Nokia phone that you could text on only. And but you'd have to press the number six three times to get C and <laughs> And it was in the days of, like, internet cafes and sending postcards. You know, that doesn't sound like that long ago, but I guess in, in technology speak it was. But that trip changed me, like, for the better, definitely. But I still ended up coming back and getting into the cycle of the career again, you know, working my way up and getting to the point where, you know, you, you get the next step in your career, your next pay rise, your next responsibility, da 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 but I, I just knew deep down that I needed to be doing something else. And, you know, I guess we don't know where we're going to end up next, but we've kind of got ambitions to be doing different life differently, haven't we? I think for me, I want to live our best life and give Ollie the opportunities that my mum brought four of us up on her own. She busted her backside. She made sure that we never went without you know, she was absolutely awesome. I want to be as awesome for Ollie and just spend as much time as we can teaching him, being with him and watching him grow into an awesome young man. Yes, at the moment we should be um, with him and our dog Dizzy, who's a 12-year-old Border Collie with diabetes now, bless her. Um, we should be off in our camper van travelling Europe and visiting my sister in Portugal etc but we're stuck here at the moment and I think the pandemic has really made us think a lot more differently about well what are we going to do next you know maternity leave and the year off will come to an end at some point and I think the both of us are quite philosophical about well what will happen next it's wide open at the moment isn't it we're halfway through our planned year and it just feels a little bit sad not to have achieved obviously it, we've had an incredible time with Dizzy and Ollie yeah and each other obviously um oh thanks <laughs> oh, so yeah I've got to slip that in there I think it just seems so sad to think that we are halfway to it being over you know and then it is potentially back to you know the grindstone back to anaesthetics for me probation for you you know, Ollie in childcare, you know, dizzy, hanging out, <laughs> making the most of Ollie, not crying. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. I think it's something that we need to keep thinking about and something we need to plan. Yeah, and um, that, that time will come to an end fairly soon, but we're still, I mean, I think I'm more of the optimist with this and I really, really hope we do get to travel um, as planned before we have to you know go back to work and do that kind of thing um so i do still hope we can kind of get something out of that travel wise while he's just woken up don't look him in the eyes <laughs> let me just get him for me i brexit i think has thrown a big spanner in the works as well covid has made things more complicated not being allowed to park up places, not being able to travel through Portugal or park in Portugal now, is it, overnight? Something like that. Okay, Ollie's joining the conversation now. I've just had to take his socks off because he had a pair of um, reindeer socks. <laughs> reindeer rattle socks. <laughs> Which is great for March, isn't it? You're embracing Christmas, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, so who knows what travelling will look like if and when we get to go. But in the meantime... I think we're, you know, we can say we're really enjoying caravan life, even when it's gotten really cold and snowy. We've kind of, we've coped, haven't we? I think we, well, we've had a summer duvet on the whole of the winter. Um, we tried to make, we did put the winter duvet on at one point, and then we realised that we couldn't cope. 
With Ollie in the room, we have to keep it between like 16 and 20. And with a winter duvet, my God, we were cooking. So at least with our thin one, if it gets cold, we, we know it before Ollie gets too cold. So Yeah, and I think we'll, we'll probably do another video about how we've kept warm in the winter um, in the static caravan. And um, we've done a couple of things to keep it warm. We've put skirting around the outside. Or, well, I say we. <laughs> Leighton did like... Well, you did half of it. Yeah, Leighton did... 99% of that um, insulated underneath the floor from the underneath okay. of the van that was another job um, and then we've got like little heaters scattered about, we've got the gas fire we've got a little, excuse you got a panel radiator in the, in the main kind of living area we've bought an oil filled radiator for the bedroom and we've got a mini oil filled radiator for the lounge that we keep on overnight um, so yeah you know, I think we've gone the worst of the winter as well. I think my biggest struggle over the winter has been the bathroom. <laughs> Going for a pee on that bloody freezing cold toilet seat. It's one of the only rooms that doesn't get any heat at all through the winter. So it's been absolutely Baltic in there. But yeah, other than that, it's been fine. Yeah, we've coped. So um, that was just a bit of an intro, really, to who we are, what we're doing. We set up the podcast because... Well, we'd always intended to do something with my sister, hadn't we? To share her story on YouTube about how she'd moved to, to France. And you've probably listened to that episode already. Um, and then it, it just kind of went from there, didn't it? We didn't, like, plan for ages and ages. Ooh, let's set up a podcast. It just... Ooh, bringing up a five-month-old in a <laughs> pandemic is not enough. Let's do a podcast. <laughs> but it is fun, isn't it? Oh, and that was one thing I wanted to mention, that... Obviously, I've you know we've interviewed Ellie twice now. We've interviewed um, Helen Dainty, who's a global cycling nomad. We've also interviewed two more people, who you'll hear from in future episodes. And personally, I think I've, this this has kind of surprised me, but I guess it shouldn't, but it does. Um, I've been I've been inspired by listening to Ellie's stories again, and by finding out more about Helen and the other two guests, three guests that we've got coming up, you know, I think it kind of reinforces what we're hoping to do with life. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think we're both guilty of not, I can't think of the word I'm trying to say, kind of appreciate what we do, or what we manage to achieve. So we look at other people's stories sometimes and we think, wow, that's absolutely incredible. Whereas we're still at the beginning of the next chapter. So let's hope we can make this an awesome summer where we get to explore, see new places, get Ollie in the sea. Yeah, we're really keen, obviously, for Ollie to go further afield um, than just Wales. Yeah, I didn't mean the Gower. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right if he goes to the Gower. Um, but yeah, to be able to explore an adventure with this little one in tow is going to be absolutely brilliant and can't wait for that. And yeah, in terms of our future living life differently, then I'm really excited for what it holds. I think a few things might have to kind of come into play to, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but I guess it's that we neither of us want to go back to the grindstone. We want to be doing things a bit differently, and but it's just finding out what that might look like. So this podcast is helping us. I hope it's helping you as well, inspiring you in some way and... It's quite funny. This is one of the first podcasts I've actually managed to sit all the way through and take part. Usually at some point, Ollie starts making some sort of stirring noise and he's like, run! Run away with the baby! And then grab the dog because the dog starts huffing or panting or my phone goes off. So it's been nice to actually sit and do one. Yeah, I think naively I thought that we could both just, you know, find an hour to sit down with these various guests and chat together. And it just hasn't happened. So the one we did with Ellie was hysterical. <laughs> Between the dog panting, going to find a stick and start sitting there gnawing away, the baby screaming, didn't happen. Yeah. Anyway, we'll get there. We'll get there in the end. I hope you've enjoyed this bonus episode. Happy International Women's Day. Happy International Women's Day. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> from all of us and um, hope you enjoy the next episodes that we've got for you uh, at the moment we're releasing podcasts once every two weeks because just realistically we want to 
give it our best shot we don't want to okay. stretch ourselves too thin um, and not be able to deliver awesome content so the next guests that we interview you're going to absolutely love we've got some awesome ladies lined up uh, people that I think are seriously going to inspire us to get on our backs- off our backsides and do something different we're already on our backsides sitting here <laughs> doing this off them, off them off, off, off alright Take care, everyone. We'll speak to you on the next episode. Stay safe. Bye.